Hi, this is Johannes Krieger with Senshi Knives. And in this video, I want to show you how I built my forge from inexpensive materials with relatively basic tools. I will go over every step I took and explain it so you can follow along. I want to start with a short breakdown of every forge's structure, which can be separated in three essential parts. The burner for heating, the insulation to retain as much heat as possible, and the structure to hold everything together. But before I start the building process, I want to show you real quick what will be needed for the build. For the structural parts, you will need a small gas tank for the hull, 40cm of 10mm round bar for the feet, three 50mm M6 screws and a 10cm long piece of pipe the burner fits barely through. For the insulation, we are going to use a ceramic fiber mat that fits the size of your tank. Two 40cm pieces of 50 by 50mm angle iron as casing, as well as a 40cm long pipe with the same diameter as the burner. And finally, high heat resistant refractory material. I like to use this Feuerzement Steinfest. The needed burner can easily be DIY'd, but I will reuse the one I bought years ago as it still works. Something you will need to buy is an appropriate regulator that allows for the needed high flow, as a barbecue regulator has a far too low flow rate. As far as tools go, I used a drill, an old knife, a trowel, a bucket, a MIG welder, but an electrode welder should do the trick as well, and an angle grinder with a cutting wheel and wire wheel. Also needed is an M6 thread cutter that can be easily replaced with three M6 nuts that are welded in place instead. But let's get started with the build. And it is quite convenient to start with the structure to attach the rest to it. This is an old helium tank, so it's actually not explosive. Well, this is very important to mention here. If you are using an old propane tank, or you are not sure if the form of fill was ignitable, make sure it is empty in the first place, and afterward, either use an existing hole or drill a hole in the tank and fill it to the brim with water to get rid of any gases that might be left inside. So first off, I stripped the tank of its paint. This is important so I can weld the four feet to the body. In order to ensure that these are completely orthogonal, I'm just putting it right on here. With the feet attached, I need to adjust them a little bit with a hammer for the forge to sit solid on the table. The hole for the burner. We'll drill a pilot hole with this thing here and then widen it so the burner fits through. With the pilot hole drilled, I mark out the full hole and start cutting it out. It is not really important how it looks. The only important thing is to fit as closely to the burner as possible so as little heat is escaping. With the burner fitting, I recycled the holder for the burner from my old forge as well. I clean it up a bit and fit it to the curve of the tank. This is the pipe the burner fits through with three threaded holes for screws added, which will hold the burner. With the burner attached, I clean up the handles on the top of the tank and continue with marking the ports. For the top and bottom, I use my height gauge to make sure it is perfectly level. This can be done by eye with no performance issues as I'm doing the same with the vertical markings. I just follow the markings and cut out the ports. Look out for the very sharp edges. I just go in with a file and break them. With the second side done, it already looks quite nice. I just have to remove the remaining paint that I didn't already, as there was no need to weld in that area and I cut away most of it anyway. With that out of the way, the structure is done and I can start with the insulation, for which I use a ceramic fiber mat. They are delivered in big mats and must be handled with care. Always wear a respirator when working with the material and make sure to clean off the fibers as soon as possible after finishing working with it. I fit the mat as one continuous roll to the inside of the tank and cut a hole for the burner to fit through. Basically, the forge would be ready for use now, but the ceramic fiber material would start spouting the fibers into the air anytime the forge is used, so it must be covered. For this, I will use a heat resistant refractory. Oh. 
I mix it to the shown consistency and start scooping it into the bottom section, making sure I cover all of the fiber mat. To make sure the floor of the forge is nice and flat, I add these angle irons. They also help with constructing half of the walls. This refractory can be hardened by blasting it with the burner right away. But look out to not overdo it, as trapped evaporating water can release in small explosions, throwing chunks around. After blasting it for a bit, I can remove the angle irons and reveal the nice sharp corners they gave me. To cast the ceiling of the forge, I flip it over, add a pipe with the same diameter as the burner to the holder to act as a space holder and scoop more of the refractory material in. I again work with the angle irons for the corners and walls as well as with the burner to set it faster. The heat here is not the main factor in curing it faster, as the high concentration of carbon dioxide leads to the faster hardening. I remove the space holder pipe very carefully to not damage or crack the material. This is beneficial in the early stages of the curing process, as the refractory will keep its form but is not as brittle when fully cured. With the walls fully intact, I don't need to fear the ceiling falling down on me when flipping it on its feet. With that, I can install the burner I make sure to mount the burner flush with the insulation so it is protected a bit, as any exposed part would deteriorate a lot faster. In the meantime I work on a door. The metal frame is from my old forge, made from some angle iron I welded to a hinge. I start with fitting it with some wire mesh as reinforcement and scoop in more refractory. The original forge doors had an aerated concrete fitted that deteriorated very fast. That won't be the case with this version. After finishing, I put it aside to set. A day later, I set it up on a pedestal in position and weld the hinge to the housing. To finish it up, I put a big angle iron on the bottom and weld it in place. This is meant as a receiver for a smaller angle iron, on which I can slide a material holder if I work with variably long pieces. Okay. So let's set it up. With the stopcock closed, I open the regulator and adjust it to about 0.1. Then I take a piece of paper from the trash can, light it up and mm. make sure it burns it very in. well, it stuff it into the oven and open the stopcock. With the flames pouring out the sides, I open and adjust the air vent. And the forge is ready for use. It's also possible, once the air vent position is found, to leave that open and just fire it up and there. Then you just Something that is important to understand with forges is that the drastic temperature changes will deteriorate any material. The quality of them just determines the time it takes to do so. The floor is especially susceptible to damage. I like to use these cheap and easy to replace fire clay plates to protect my forge floor that is very time costly to repair. This type of forge can be pushed without problems to forge volume temperatures. And I love the dragon's breath it spews while doing so. Well, that's it. The forge is built. I hope you could follow along nicely and have a lot of fun with it as well. If anything was unclear or you have further questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, I'll be happy to answer them all. And as always, have a nice one. Bye.